Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are talking about Mike Flanagan's newest creation. Uh, it is on Netflix. I believe it's a Netflix exclusive. It is called Midnight Mass. Um, before I jump into this review, I need to preface this uh, just so I'm not needlessly offending anyone. Um, I am of the mindset that religion is one of the worst things, if not the worst things, to ever happen to society. And yes, I will go as far back uh, as, you know, early man staring up at the stars, wondering what those stars were, and trying to figure things out for themselves. Um, but it's the organized part that I need to harp on here. Um, it's organized religion. I do not hold any animosity whatsoever toward anybody's belief systems or beliefs or any of that stuff. I hold a great deal of animosity toward organized religion and religion in general. I don't care which religion it is. Um, so I will be saying things in this review uh, that might come off as mockery, uh, might come off as insulting. So if you are someone who is overly sensitive about your religion, then maybe click away. Okay, so uh, I'm a huge fan of Mike Flanagan, and he keeps on getting better and better and better. Uh, I, I think the very first thing I saw from him was his first movie. I might be wrong there, but Hush, uh, with his wife Kate Seagal, Siegel, something like that. In the, uh, I always get her confused with Kate Seagal from uh, you know Married with Children and Sons of Anarchy. Anyways, uh, in fact, that might be Katie's. I don't, I don't know. That's beside the point. But. Uh, um, I, I watched that one. I liked it all right. Um, but Dr. Sleep and Gerald's Game really uh, enforced my, my love for his stuff. Uh, I watched Midnight Mass. I have not seen The Haunting of Bly Manor or Hill House. I, haven't want, I, am, I have started uh, The Haunting of Hill House, but I wish I had saved Midnight Mass for afterwards because... Flanagan has done nothing but gotten better and better as he's gone along. Um, this show deals a lot with religious trauma. Um, I was a very, very devout Christian up until the point when I hit 13, and I started asking questions, and all of my questions were answered with, you just have to have faith. And then an older boy in youth group, uh, I was 13, he was 16 or 17, um, he said, Jesus is just Santa for adults. And that's all it took for me to start asking questions, for me to start researching myself, so on and so forth. Um, the only criticism I have about Midnight Mass, I want to get out up front. And it is very small in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it is a seven episode series. I loved every single second of it, but I did have one question early on that bugged me, and it still bugged me. Um, whereas some of my other questions and everything were answered. Uh, and that is, I do not believe for a second, when this, this isn't a spoiler, I do not believe for a second that the character of Bev would have just blindly believed Paul Hill replacing Monsignor Pruitt. I don't believe for a second. I think she would have been on the phone talking to people um, on, well, on the mainland because that uh, Midnight Mass happens on an island. I completely blanked on the name of the island, but maybe it'll pop up while I'm talking about it. I don't believe for a second that she wouldn't have double-checked. Um, and her character only reinforces that the farther along you get in the series, that she would not have just blindly believed. Um, there is a note uh, that that is made. She says something about she knew it from, from the jump uh, regarding the... I think very obvious twist of the of the series. Even though it's obvious, it's still it's still great. I, I love the way it panned out, but I still don't believe that she wouldn't have called that day, that very first day that Paul Hill showed up for uh, for John Pruitt. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm going to jump into the the rest of it. If I go into spoiler territory, I will make sure because some of the twists re revolve around you not knowing the uh, the the trope. I guess it is. Um, and I think I want to talk about it a little bit at the end in a spoiler section. Uh, but right off the bat, two sections that are absolutely must-watch television is the ending of... No, not the ending. The the conversation between Lisa and Joe Colley uh, in his trailer in episode three was 
probably the best television I've ever seen. Period. Um, it, it's I, I can't think of any scene for for a television show for a series that is better than that scene. Not better acted, not better written. It is absolutely brilliant, and you know why she's there. You know exactly what's about to happen. But the actor who plays Joe Colley was brilliant. Lisa was brilliant. It's just an absolutely perfect scene in a bubble encapsulated in itself. You don't have to know anything else about the series. Just watching those two actors perform those lines was, it, it gives me chills. I got goosebumps going up and down my arms and my legs right now just, just thinking of it. Um, another highlight is uh, the ending of episode five. If that ending does not destroy you, I, 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 would, I would actually call you heartless. Um, I would mean no offense, but I was like, do you have us, do you have empathy whatsoever? That scene utterly devastated me. And of course, the last two episodes are, I mean, they're fantastic. I'm gonna be harping on that word like I usually do, because uh, this is a positive review. I definitely want everyone to go out and check out this series. Um, one thing that is that was brought up uh, early on, re, re, you know, go, going along with the trope, um, why didn't anyone question it? You know, why why doesn't anyone? And this is where I'm going to get into the the parts that might be offensive to religious people. Um, why didn't anyone question? We are literally talking about religious people, about Christians, Catholics, whatever, who their whole religion, when you question it, falls apart. Um, so they are, by nature, gullible. Um, for them to just believe that you have to have faith, you gotta have faith. Everything is faith, 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 faith. And they are being led to the led through this by someone that they utterly trust without question. Um, at one point in time, I mean, it's 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 brought up several times why they wouldn't say the word. Um, for those of you who watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but the I believe that the angel was a fantastically creepy creation. Um, the very first time you you see it, the uh, it, it's just it, it's when and when Bull walks into the house, that scene is another highlight. I think that's episode two. Um, all of it, it uh, I mean the whole series is just amazing. If you haven't watched it, you really, really should watch it. Um, people are joking, and I just kind of shake my head about this. People have joked that they call it midnight monologues and that there's too much monologuing and rada 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 rada. Here's why I liked the monologuing. In fact, that was probably my favorite part about the series, that there was so much monologuing. It took a visual cinematic experience, and it made it felt as if I was, it made me feel as if I was watching a book. I know that might sound weird, but that's how it felt. I was getting the, the internal dialogue that you normally get that is usually lacking from like adaptations. This isn't an adaptation, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, it felt like a book. It felt like I was watching a book. And I was, and it happened over a long series, a long period of time, seven episodes. I was invested. I almost said I read. I, we watched uh, two episodes a night. Uh, we did only watch episode five alone that night we didn't do another one after it because it destroyed us so much so i did two two one and then uh two to finally uh round out the series um and i suggest you watch the last two episodes back to back if you have if you if you haven't watched it um but i i want i i guess i want to uh approach the next bit that might be uh, uh, might be a spoiler. I don't know, but here, here I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there anyways. And I said this on Twitter, but this is the best Stephen King adaptation of a book Stephen King never wrote. You can tell Mike Flanagan is a constant reader, even if you didn't know about Doctor Sleep and Gerald's Game and um, his wanting to uh, his him wanting to adapt Revival, which I I will go from that into this. I do think it's funny. It's like Flanagan couldn't get the rights or couldn't get, you know, Revival made. Um, he, I think he got the rights, he just couldn't get it made. Um, so did Josh Boone. It seems to be a running, uh, it's a bunch of bullshit. You know, nobody wants to spend the money to de-age uh, the characters. They just don't believe in the story enough, especially with the, the way Revival ends. It's a very dour piece 
of literature. Um, but it, it's very dark. Uh, but it feels like Flanagan just took all of his favorite Stephen King ideas and mashed them all together into one story. Sorry I cut there. I, I, I said a spoiler I shouldn't have. Um, so, I, so sorry for the very, very abrupt cut. Anyways, uh, but yeah, it, you can tell Mike Flanagan loves Stephen King, um, and I, I respect him and love him for creating this, this mashup of some very, very cool Stephen King content. Now, if that wasn't his intention, I mean no slight against the man. There are plenty of original ideas in here, and even uh, non-original ideas that are delivered or executed much, much better than what he might be riffing off of, uh, the, the original source material, whatever you want to call it. Now, the reason why I like this so much, whereas I usually hate it when people just repurpose uh, Stephen King, is because Stephen King himself repurposes content, but he makes it better. Um, if you watch my Phantoms by Dean Koontz versus Stephen King's It, you will see all the connections that I feel Stephen King read Phantoms and was like, I can do this better, and he did it better. Uh, Flanagan, I believe he, he, he nailed the feel of a Stephen King story, and Stephen King didn't even write this Joker. I would love to read a book from Mike Flanagan. If it's anywhere near as good as this. Um, okay, I'm right here at the end, I'm going to traipse into spoiler territory. Uh, do you know my opinion? If you have not watched this, what is wrong with you? Unfuck that right now. Go out and watch it. Especially if you're a Stephen King fan. And knowing the fans of my channel, you probably are a Stephen King fan. So definitely go out and check it out. But yeah, spoilers in three, two, one. Spoilers. Vampires. <laughs> um, this is this. I mean, even down to the trunk being pushed in to the house. This this book. This show. I keep calling it a book. You see what I'm talking about from earlier in the video. Um, even from that, it's it's Salem's Lot, man. It's Salem's Lot, and it's absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I said on on Twitter that uh, you're going to see people when James Wan James Wan is uh, rebooting uh, Salem's Lot. When, when when Salem's Lot comes out, when Juan's reboot comes out, people are going to say that it's a that it ripped off Midnight Mass. They're going to say it. It's just like people who came out and ridiculously said that uh, Andy, Andy Muschietti's It reboots um, ripped off Stranger Things. You're going to see it. It's going to be funny. We'll just sit back and laugh to ourselves about it. Um, but yeah, man, uh, this, is, this is Salem's Lot. This is Salem's Lot meets Revival. Um, and not so much Needful Things or Storm of the Century, but there are elements of those things also. Uh, it's, it's so amazingly done. And I've never really said that or felt that way about anything that I felt was a, not knockoff, because this isn't a knockoff. This is not a cheap product. This is not a cheap cash grab. It has so much heart and passion into it. Uh, it just felt like so many scenes were taken straight from Revival, or so many scenes were taken straight from Salem's Lot. Um, but I loved every single bit of it. Um, I think Stephen King even enjoyed it. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really paid attention too much um, to, to Twitter lately, and Twitter's pretty much my only Stephen King news other than checking out his website. But um, I, I was talking to a friend, and I believe they told me Stephen King was uh, raving about it. Anyways, uh, but that's my the, the spoiler here, how the angel, it, it just fits so perfectly vampirism and the Bible. It fits so perfectly, and Flanagan, uh, not reinstates that, but uh, he, he, he goes over that quite a lot in, in this story about how you can use religion to explain vampires, and I'm so, you can use Christianity at least, um, to explain vampire, vampirism, and it just, it, it blew me away why, how this had never been done before. Um, not in this, this context. Like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a mashup of Revival and uh, Salem's Lot. And it's done so perfectly. I just like, why didn't I see these connections? Um, I thought, and, and here, here's another thing. I absolutely cannot stand, I hate vampire fiction. It's, it, unless somebody does something so amazingly with with the content like Flanagan did here I just don't care about vampires it's such it's probably the most overused trope next to werewolves and exorcisms I think even exorcisms I don't care too much for exorcism uh, fiction but I would watch 
I would 100% watch an exorcism movie directed by, uh, by Mike Flanagan. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on uh, Midnight Mass. Uh, again, if you have not seen it, why? Go out, not go out, but uh, get Netflix if you don't have it already. And if you're one of the few people out there who don't have it already, uh, get it. Watch the show, man. It, it's worth it, at least for me. And let me know what you thought of it um, if you've already watched it. Definitely leave your thoughts down there in the doobly-doo whether or not you loved it, hated it, felt meh about it. I already talked to one person who felt meh about it, and I was like, okay, I, I, I can see your point. I disagree, of course, but I can see your point. Let me know in detail why you felt the way you did about this show so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been a television, probably the first television show review for 30 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!